Hi my lovely Frosty fam, it's me Karen Frost here at Nail Decadence. We're finally back to editing, so I've got a video for you. I am feeling a lot better than I was feeling from the Rona. Yes, I did have Covid. I have... Um, gone through the testing process and I'm now testing negative so I'm through the worst of it it was um this this real <laughs> covid is real trust me covid is real um, I'm not gonna go through everything that I went through but needless to say I was extremely poorly but um I'm feeling a whole lot better. I'm not 100% of course by any means, but I'm able to sit up in bed and do this voiceover, which is way more than I could do last week. So that's an improvement and I'll take it. I'm alive. Uh, yeah, count your blessings wherever they fall. You count your blessings and I'm grateful to be alive and to have survived the um, nasty virus that is COVID. So yeah, um, it's going to be a, a little bit more time before I can get to um, make more videos. So at the moment, I'm just editing videos that I've already got. But it's going to it's, it's going to be a little while before I'm strong enough to actually um, start filming videos again. But for now, at least I can get some editing done and get some content on my channel so it doesn't just fall dormant i hate it when my channel gets um uh left um neglected but there was nothing i could do i was just far too poorly to do anything else so i just want to say a huge huge thank you to my wonderful frosty fam for being so supportive and caring and kind whilst I've been sick and unable to do the videos. Um, yeah, you guys are amazing and I'm so grateful that my Frosty fam is just... You guys are the best subscribers ever and the way you reacted to me being poorly and hoping me to get better and, and, and just your wishful thinking and prayers and best wishes were just... Oh, it kept me going, knowing you guys were all saying, we'll still be here when you come back, don't stress. You know, all of that really helped put my mind at ease because I was worried that I would lose subscribers from not um, uploading and stuff. And like I said, when, when you don't upload and you let your channel go dormant, you get out of the algorithm and then it's harder for you people to see your videos and you're basically starting from the bottom again. So I'd appreciate it ever so much if you'd watch this video and, um, you know, a, a couple more of, that, of my other videos, maybe, please. <laughs> Just to get my views back up because I have lost, I've lost traction in my channel, unfortunately, but that's the way it goes. Anyway now that i've got all of that out of the way you know housekeeping as it were got all that out of the way let's get into what we're doing in this video so i wanted to do a sexy set of nails that was my thinking behind this set i um saw this really cute little teddy um lingerie outfit thing and i thought oh oh I wonder if I can do a set of nails to uh, complement that. So I grabbed some lace that you saw in the beginning, that red lace and some red acrylic powders and thought, you know what, let's let's do this. So this is this, this is it. This is the design I came up with. So as you can see from that first nail, I've done a very sort of V-shaped um, nail bed. Oh, um, please bear with me. I'm still a bit stuffed up. So if you can hear it in my voice, if I sound um, like I've got a blocked nose, it's because I've got a blocked <laughs> nose. So yeah, um, sorry if I sound terrible, but I wanted, I, I felt well enough to do this. So I wanted to get this video uploaded um, 
well edited and voiced over and then uploaded of course but um yeah so anyway doing a bit of a, an extended nail bed a bit of a pointy one because these nails are stiletto i wanted the nail bed to reflect that shape so that's why i've done the extended nail bed a bit pointy then i've moved on and obviously i did i built the nail up so i used my cover pink as color only and then i added the clear on top to build my structure um, on that uh, extended nail bed so anyway on the middle finger i'm doing a full nail of the cover pink as you just saw and on to the index finger i'm going to be doing the red now red black and white are probably the more especially the red and black they are definitely the more difficult colors that you can work with acrylic <coughs> excuse me acrylic powder wise they are very pigmented they can be very messy if you're not careful with your brush um, so I use these to just paint the color on I um, I always use my colors for color only and then I build my strength with my clear acrylic that way my colors last a little bit longer and also I get that strength from my clear and it gives this gorgeous glass effect over the colors that's my personal preference there are some colors that are strength powders that you can build the nail with I just personally prefer to use my uh, colored powders just for the color only so I'm applying this very very thinly just to get the color coverage opaque and um, not patchy at all just nice and full coverage of the color but without building any um, bulk on the nail because I will be capping it in clear acrylic to then like I said get my strength and structure so as you see I'm patting and pressing and stroking and making sure that that acrylic uh, red acrylic is lying nice and flat and smooth as I can get it with my brush I'm also using my brush on the sides to taper it in to make sure I'm not bulking out the side walls to give me less filing and I'll let that set up and then I've gone back to the index finger and this is where I'm going to do the ombre so I'm going to use the cover pink to ombre over the red now ombreing red and black are the most difficult to ombre because they're such pigmented and dark colors um, it can be a tricky ombre to do but as you'll see it is doable you just have to take your time with it so you see I just added tiny beads working my ombre because I'm doing the ombre on a diagonal slant it's not just a straight ombre I like to do it on a diagonal slant a lot of the times it's just more aesthetically pleasing to the eye and it helps to give the eye the illusion um, the nail the illusion of slimness um, when you're looking at it when you do things that are totally horizontal it can make the nail look wider than it actually is so when you're doing things on a slant that's why you often see me do things on a slant it's just aesthetically it tricks the eye into thinking that it's slimmer than it, it really is kind of thing it's just um it's all about perspectives so that's why a lot of the time you'll see me do a diagonal slant as opposed to just a horizontal ombre so yeah I'll just work this ombre with tiny wet beads of that cover pink you can see what I'm doing using the very tip of my brush to blend that ombre in to get it to look as nice as I can it will it won't uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for find your words Karen it can look messy first of all but once you've added your clear over the top you'll see it kind of just helps meld it all together now if you're concerned that your ombre hasn't quite gone the way you'd like it to a, a really cool trick is to use a translucent pink to cap with because that helps your ombre it, it just there's something about it even though it doesn't really add a lot of color a translucent pink it 
there is something about how it helps to smooth the transition of an ombre that's a really neat trick to do so if you're concerned like I said rather than using clear at this point you could use a translucent pink over that middle part of your ombre then carry on capping with clear just a you know handy little trick for you little tip for you just in case you you struggled with your ombre but you'll see it might look a little bit messy right now but when I'm finished you'll see it just looks so much better once it's finished and done don't be scared of ombre and reds and blacks it's doable but you just need to take your time with it and it takes a little bit more effort than say you know if you was just doing a baby boomer with white and, and pink it's just because the colors are so pigmented they just take a little bit more time and effort but it can be done as you can see it can be done not a problem just take your time with it so as you can see i'm just going to carry on capping this nail and then i will obviously go back to the other nail and cap that this is where i'm thinking about my structure so i want to make sure that the strength is there so I'll get my apex in that back third make sure the tip is as strong as it needs to be because stilettos you do want to make when you've got a pointy nail there's not much surface of the nail so you do want to make sure it's thick enough that it's not just going to snap but you don't want it to be too thick so that it looks majorly bulky there's a thin line between not enough and too much so try and stay in between <laughs> not going too little or not going too much as usual you want to look at that nail from all different angles and just make sure that it is the correct thickness all the way round so now I've finished with that uh, index finger I'll go back to the little finger and then I will cap that nail now I didn't swipe over properly with some monomer and my bead was a bit dry hence I started having to stab into the acrylic there because I had a frosted patch so when it crystallizes um, you get that white patch of dry powder so that's why I was sort of stabbing into it I was trying to get some monomer into that powder that was uh, dry to avoid that happening it's best to just dampen the nail down with a bit of monomer first and also make sure that your bead isn't too dry that bead was way too dry that first one and that's why it didn't go according to plan but i will rectify that issue so that nail is not looking too tidy it's a bit thick and a bit bulky on the sides there um so i'm going to just add acrylic to the free edge below that and try not to add too much more in the middle of the nail because that like I said because the bead was too dry it actually meant that there was too much acrylic staying in that plate I didn't well, I wasn't able to move the acrylic further down the nail so yeah but it's it, it can be rectified in filing I don't say re rely on your filing I never say rely on your filing to sort things out but if these things happen there you go as you saw there I was just I was trying to show you of where it was too thick um, and then my camera stopped recording and I didn't realize so sorry about that so all I did was finish off um, that little finger where I was just showing you where it was too thick and then um, I've pulled out my dust extractor and now I'm going to file in that smile line um, this smile line is fairly easy to do because it is just a chevron type smile line it's just a case of getting that hand file right up against the sides and filing it nice and straight and neat and then dust it off give it a quick whip over with a bit of monomer and then I will use the red acrylic right up that wall that we've built so that I get a nice crisp smile line I'm not building the bulk with this I will cap it with clear acrylic so I'm just using my red for the color payoff as usual so right up those walls it doesn't matter if I get any over the top of that cover pink because I've already built my apex in with the clear 
Um, when I'm filing, I, I'll just file off any of that red that's on top. It's not a problem and it will just reveal a really nice crisp smile line. So I'm not adding any bulk. I'm just working that powder with the monomer of course that red powder down the nail get full coverage out of it swipe those sides keep it as neat as I can and then I can add my clear acrylic I didn't wipe my brush quite as much as I should have done so my clear acrylic is looking a little bit pink there from the red that's what happens if you don't uh, wipe your brush good enough um, a little tip would be to use two pots of monomer so that you're using one pot for the um, red and then the other pot of monomer for your clear and your cover pink if you uh, are concerned about your clear not being as clear as it should be that's also always a good trick to do especially when you're using black um, and definitely the red as well if you want to make sure that none of your other colors get contaminated by the red and end up tinged pink have a, a separate monomer dish for the red or the black if you're working with that it just keeps your monomer nice and clean then because you've, you've not had to use that same monomer with the red as you're using for the clear and the cover pink if that makes sense so yeah two two monomer pots is definitely a good little trick if you're concerned about your monomer getting contaminated with a very bright or deep colour that you're using acrylic powder wise. So I'll just cap that red, get that all sorted. Once I've capped that I'm going back to that index finger, no, uh, not index, the middle finger and you will have noticed that I did not cap that middle finger I just applied the cover pink for colour only and this is why I didn't cap it because now it's had a chance to set up I can use some nail glue and attach the lace it's a bit of a fiddle and a faff um, I should have used something to hold down here we go so a backing form or a plastic baggie is a good little trick to use to hold down the lace whilst your glue is setting up and it's always good to run the glue along the edges after you've cut it because um, it makes it easier to file. The edges can fray and just having a little bit of glue makes the lace hard and that enables you to be able to actually file it on the sides. So I'll just add on the glue where I need it and use this um, backing, nail form backing to hold it down and some of it got stuck on so I'm just gonna have to remove that that's really annoying when some of the paper gets stuck on it's like no so I'll just remove that with some tweezers and then I've trimmed the sides and now I'm going to use the clear acrylic to encapsulate that lace so wet beads first of all to get it to sink in and around that lace and then I can go in with a normal consistency bead and cap that entire nail so we are protecting the lace but we're also adding our strength and structure the reason to keep the um, cover pink thin is this because you don't want to bulk out the nail with the lace and the capping layer so the thinner you keep that cover pink layer the better because it gives you a, a, a better margin for filing then so I will encapsulate all of that lace with the clear acrylic all the way along the sides. Now make sure you get the sides, it's really important. Um, but if you do miss any bits on the side and you, when you're filing, those bits start fraying and, and it makes it difficult to file, just use a little bit of glue and let it dry and then you'll be able to file it because it, it, it really does help with the fraying. Fabrics can fray out, it's fray on the sides, it's just what fabric does, you know, you cut it, it can fray. So yeah, just bear that in mind, glue is your best friend in those circumstances if it's fraying on the side. Just dab a bit of glue on it, let it set up and once it's hard you're able to then file it and you won't have any bits of hanging threads on the sides and it will look a lot, ne a lot neater. 
So once I've added my apex and everything in, I will look over the other nails and see how they're getting along. And I noticed that the ring finger was a little bit lower than the other nails. So I'm just adding a little bit of clear, clear acrylic onto that finger. And then as I looked again, I noticed that this finger was also a little bit low in the apex area. So just a tiny bead on that back third there, just to build it up. We, what we're looking for, because what I always encourage you to do is look at all of the nails as a set before you put all your stuff away, because it's nothing worse than um, after you've filed for you to realise that you know you've got a, some nails thinner than others. So I always encourage you to look at all of the nails when you've finished. Make sure that they are all a similar thickness and width, and then put your stuff away rather than have to get your stuff back out again i hate getting my stuff back out again once i've put it away i don't want to get it back out so yeah look up the nails as a group not just as individuals so as you saw there we it's you know filing for my frosty filing freaks so i filed that smile line nice and neat and you see that reveal come through i do love a crisp smile line so satisfying so i'm just going because i've got my e-file out i'm just going to use it to rectify some of that mess on the little finger that i made where i added that dry bead so it was bulked out quickest way to get that down is to use the good old e-file i don't have it on very high at the moment because there's not there's no need to i'm removing not that much acrylic so yeah i'm just using it to help shape the nail which gives obviously the uh, hand file less filing to do use your e-file to your advantage don't be scared of it use it it's a it's a very handy tool for a nail tech and it saves your arms and fingers and everything so definitely use it so you'll see it I'm using it on the under arch to sort that out make sure that's nice and neat so any of the acrylic that's rolled underneath that free edge I can get that with the e-file I can also do somewhat of a bit of a debulk just shaping the surface of the nail and tapering in those sides a little bit which gives again my hand file less of work to do so yeah, I would just use the e-file where it is needed on each nail. My application wasn't great in this video, but we can sort it with the hand, uh, hand file and an e-file. Thank goodness. <laughs> Sometimes your application doesn't go right. It's not the end of the world. It can always be fixed. Use your tools to your advantage. So I will just use my e-file wherever it is needed. You'll see I stop and look, but I'm not just looking at the nail that I'm working on. I'm also comparing it to the other nails as well so that I'm getting the set to be nice and cohesive and uniform, not just individual nails that are all different shapes and sizes. That's um, really important for a set to be a set. You know, you want it, them all to be brothers and sisters and cousins you know <laughs> they got to be in the same family <laughs> they don't have to be exactly the same but you know similar so once I've finished um, debulking and just tapering in those sides a little bit I will switch my e-file bit to a um, this is a diamond bit so it doesn't remove an awful lot of acrylics a very small amount uh, it's not as harsh as, as a you know standard carbide fine or medium bit because it's just a diamond bit so I will use that around the cuticle area to get that nice and flush there's you don't want to be removing loads around the cuticle area because you shouldn't have put loads there in the first place so therefore to get that to blend into the natural nail so that it looks nice and neat as it grows out you just want to use a diamond bit to blend that in get that nice and flush to the nail and then you can switch to you know the next stage but whilst you're working around that um, cuticle area a diamond bit's really good because it, it you can't cut yourself with the diamond bit it's a very gentle bit so if you're um, more apprehensive about using your e-file 
um, around the cuticle area especially and you're, you're scared you're going to cut yourself or someone else definitely invest in some diamond bits and you will have the confidence to go around that cuticle area because you'll know that you can't cut anyone or yourself with it so that will build up your confidence um, but it's also very good for going around the cuticle area because like I said you don't need to remove an awful lot of acrylic from there so a diamond bit is perfect for those circumstances and now I will use my hand file to really sharpen up those side walls so you'll see I hold it hold the hand file flat to the nail and make sure that I've got a nice sharp V um, stiletto I'm filing both sides of the nail so I'm stopping and I'm looking because the last thing you want is to file one side more than the other which would then lead you to have a wonky nail. We don't want a wonky nail so stop and look often and don't just look at the nail you're working on, look at the other nails as well because you want them to all, you know, be straight. It, it will be so much more obvious if you have a wonky nail when you... Uh, look at all of the nails together if you're just looking at that one nail you may not notice it's wonky so definitely stop and look at all of the nails together it makes a huge difference so you see i put all the fingers together and i stop and i look that's what i'm doing i'm checking i wouldn't recommend you do something that i don't personally do um, the techniques that I share with you and the little tips and tricks I share with you, these are things that I personally do, that I um, have, it's tried and true, I've, I've done it for a while and I know that it works and it makes a difference. Um, if you were to look back at my more older videos, you'll see the progression, my nails, um, the standards have gone up you know I'm, I've, I've upped my game and it's these little tips and tricks that really do help you to get a more uniform consistent set of nails I, um, in the beginning um, when you're when you're new to nails it's very difficult I find for newbies to get a really cohesive uniform set of nails and it's because they focus on the one nail that they're working on at a time they're not stopping and looking at all of the nails together so do pay attention to those little things it makes a huge difference those little tips and tricks anyway now that I've uh, finished filing the sides with the hand file I've switched to a sanding band to save my little fingers. You can do this part with just a hand file, whiz over the surface of the nail, um, but I can do this the same job with my e-file which saves my hand so that's why I'm using my e-file to do it. So what I'm doing is I'm blending in those harsh lines that I filed in the side. I'm blending it and contouring it into the rest of the nail so that I've got a nice curve from sidewall to sidewall in a nice arched semicircle um, way. That's The last thing you want to do is leave those harsh lines on the side because you're going to have a very blocky angled nail and that's not what a nail should look like. A nail should be nice, beautifully contoured and curved. So you do want to blend in, you'll see as I'm working up the sides there, I'm working from the side up towards the centre of the nail, blending and curving that straight line out so that it's no longer a straight line it's a nice curve don't leave those harsh lines that you've done with the file there they are it you do need to do them because that's how you get a nice straight side wall but you don't want to leave it there you want to blend it in and contour it to the rest of the nail and that's how you get a nice smooth nail so i will stop and look at the nail as i'm blending it as i'm going along and look comparing it to the other nails as well not just looking at it as a, it's on its own and you see I run my thumb over it that's when I'm making sure that there are no lumps and bumps and that I've blended that sidewall area in as well because you can feel that with your uh, thumb um, you'll be able to feel if there are any lumps bumps or harsh angles on that on that nail so use your sight and your touch 
use all of your senses and you'll get a nice contoured shaped nail. So I'm just going to use a buffing file to just really smooth over those nails. So I just go up one side, down the other side, down the body of the nail and then under the under arch make sure there are no frills underneath. I can't stand the little frills that you get underneath nails. I always have to remove those. Definitely have to get them gone. I can't stand anything underneath my nails. Oh, that, that's definitely a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> there we go, up one side, around the cuticle area, down the other side, and then the body of the nail. And you saw there, I just looked and made sure that the, the tip of the nail is a similar thickness. So wherever it needs a little bit of work, I can still do that with the buffing file. And then we go underneath, remove any of those little frills move on to the next nail do the same again even though it is just a buffing file you do be, need to be careful with it because you can change the shape of your nail if you're not careful with a buffing file so be pay attention to what you're doing is what I'm saying because even though it doesn't remove a lot of acrylic it is still a file that will um, it can mess up your nail if you're not paying attention to your placement and where you're filing. I want to make sure I've got a nice pointy tip, but not too pointy. I mean, you can make them pointy if you want. It's up to you how pointy you want your stilettos to be. Um, I was going for pointy, but not too pointy. <laughs> Technical terms there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm, um, yeah. It's been a while since I've done a voiceover and I've kind of half forgotten what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> and um, I'm fading fast, I must say. Oh, I'll get through it. We'll get through it. It's the first video back, so bear with. <laughs> so, what I've done is I have removed all of the dust given hand dolly a little wash and now I'm going to use some of the drawing gels from SBD London these are a pleasure to work with so the idea behind this design is I'm using it like uh, I'm going to create a corset look so I'm using the black drawing gel to just draw some dots to uh, represent holes in the fabric because we're pretending that the red is you know fabric <laughs> and that the cover pink is skin um, so yeah just some dots opposite each other to represent the holes and then I will flash cure those in place just for 10 seconds just to hold it in place so that when I do this silver that I don't mess up my little black dots and then I'll use the little liner brush with the silver to draw my ribbon so I'm literally just doing dot to dot in a crisscross pattern and then the it should look a bit like a corset and that was the idea behind it yeah it's a bit bit smexy <laughs> like I said I was inspired by some ladies lingerie and yeah I thought I'd do some smexy nails <laughs> So yeah, this is simple design, you know me, I can't draw, so I will keep it simple whenever I do draw. <laughs> so I'll flash cure those in place because I don't want to ruin those lines, they're, they're neat and I want them to stay that way. So now I will do the opposite direction, joining the dot to dot. Just a nice thin line to represent the ribbon. It looks like it's laced up. Yeah. I thought, I, I think it's a pretty cool design. Let me know what you guys think. I decided to do the bottom bit as well because when you think about when it's laced up, it does start at the bottom with a um, horizontal line. So that's why I did that. And then I'm doing a line either side up towards the top to represent where you would tie the bow but instead of drawing the bow I'm going to use a alloy so it's a little silver um, 
alloy with some crystals in it and I just think it looks really cute so that's what I'm going to use rather than drawing the bow itself um, yeah I'm just gonna stick a bow on for why not we, we like a bit of 3d crystal and embellishment work so here we go I'm just going to use some of the jewelry gel on there oh get this on now I would recommend using a thicker jewelry gel to put this on with um, because this isn't going to be worn by anyone I didn't pay um, too much uh, attention to how I attached it but if you were putting it on somebody that was going to be wearing it definitely use a thicker gel and give it some really good support so that it doesn't come off and now it's time to top it off and keep it tough the best part look at this lace when I top coat oh isn't that beautiful lace anyway we have reached the end of the video there is some video footage and some photos at very very end as usual for you guys to take a look at but right now i'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you ever so much for coming to my channel watching this video spending some of your most precious time with me thank you ever so much i appreciate you if you have not done so already please go ahead and click that subscribe button join the frosty fam we'd love to have you if you've enjoyed this video or it's helped you in any way shape or form please go ahead and click that like button for me it takes but a second to do and i'd really appreciate it thank you and if you feel like it you are more than welcome to leave me a comment i'm happy to talk to you thank you again everybody for all your support and patience with me whilst i've been poorly i'm getting there slowly and you know within the next couple of weeks hopefully i'll be back to normal so that's all i've got for this time peeps you take care now and i'll speak to you all again very very soon bye for now I'm waiting for something and if i close my eyes